I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to slightly geek out and learn a really useful technique for stripping MIDI data out of particular regions. What do I mean by that? Okay, so within this piece what I've got is a collection of string parts and a piano part. And what I want to do is to double some of the instruments that are currently playing two other instruments. But the strings and the piano contain MIDI data which I don't need on those other tracks. And what I want is a nice efficient way of being able to get rid of the MIDI data that I don't need whilst retaining the information that I do need, the notes in other words. So while you're digesting that, let's have a listen to the piece that we're going to be working on. Okay, so this slightly delicate, sort of slightly melancholy piece. What I'm going to do is to open up the track stack where the strings are currently playing. And what I'm going to see is that I've got separate parts for violin one and two and violas and the cello as well. And what I want to do to start with is to double the cello part onto a synth bass. Now I've got a synth bass track waiting here, which is going to play a patch from retro synth, which sounds like this. So those are the notes that are sitting at the bottom of my track and of course I could just record them. But let's suppose for a moment this piece wasn't just 8 bars long, it was 64 bars long and what I want to do is just to have a quick way of being able to copy this kind of bass part down to this new instrument. Well before I do that what I can see and I'm just going to sort of draw your attention to is that in the background for the cello part I've got this undulating line and that is effectively showing me that I've got MIDI draw or automation data written onto this part. It just so happens that the modulation wheel controls the intensity of the samples that I'm using within this piece. In other words, if I push the modulation data up, the sound gets more intense, and as I pull it back, it gets a little bit softer. So you can see that line that's playing. Okay, well that's working nicely for the sample, but if I simply copy that cello part down to the synth, that modulation line may be routed through to a different parameter. And in fact, I think it is. I think it's going to provide me with vibrato, which I don't want on this synth part. So what I'm going to do is to copy the cello down to this part, and straight away what I'm going to do is also hit Shift, Option and N to rename it. And now this part is named after the track that it's sitting on. Okay, but that isn't actually going to get rid of any data for me. Let's see exactly what I mean. If I just double, uh, double click this region, what I can see is that the uh, automation lane is already on for this particular track. And what I can then see is that there is modulation data exactly as I described, which is controlling the kind of undulating, uh, the undulating shape of this particular part. What I want to do is to get rid of this modulation data. Now, we know that if we click on an individual node of automation data and we drag left or right, we effectively replace the line that's there. But even if I do that, I've still got a modulation line. It's just got a couple of points in it now rather than lots and lots. Doesn't change the fact that effectively there's going to be a modulation output which is going to be rooted into the synth, and I don't want that. What I'm going to do instead is to use Logic's list or event editors. Let's have a look. What we're going to do is to close this uh, region down and I'm going to come up into the top right hand corner where the list editor button is here. And when I click it, I can see that there are a bunch of different lists that I can look at for the events, markers, the tempo, and the time signature of my piece. It's the event list that I'm interested in here. And when I first turn it on, what I can see is a list of all of the regions which exist within my project. I can see them all separately labeled and it shows me where they start. But if I click on just this detune bass part, what will happen is that the data within that part will update within the event list. And now I'm only looking at a list of data for this one individual region. I can see that there are notes, I can see the names of the notes that are being used, and again I can see where they play. But I can see also that I've got all of this extra modulation data. These are the points that were left um, after I made that adjustment a moment ago. These little bits of data right at the beginning here, and again here at the end. Now if I select any single one of these data points, what I can then do is to use this key command, which is Shift and S. And what that does is to select similar objects. You can see now that all of the modulation data is selected, but the notes aren't. 
So it stands to reason that if I now press backspace, what I'm going to be left with is just the notes and none of that mod data, which means that straight away now there is no modulation assignment through to the detuned bass part, which hopefully is going to now produce the notes for me without any of that separate change. Okay, now it turns out that this bass part is an octave lower than I'd like it to be, but I can easily make that offset because it's now its own region. What I can do is just to simply add the uh, transposition offset I want so we don't have this super sub bass, it's gonna be an octave higher now. Okay, now let's look at another example of the same thing. I've got a piano part here as well, and what I want to do is to use just the top notes of that piano part and double them to another instrument. You've got, uh, you can see I've made this sound called Pluck Doubler, which is sitting down here, and I want the piano part to be doubled, or just the top notes of it, on this new instrument. Again, what I'm going to do is to select this track and just make sure that I'm renaming it so I can see that region separately. And then what I want to do is to double click this region so I can see the notes inside it. For a moment I'm going to turn the automation off and what I want to do this time is just carefully draw a box around the notes that I'm not going to use. I only want to use the top melody line so what I'm going to do is to select all of the other notes and get rid of them and that's just leaving me with the top uh, notes that I want to select. So firstly I've now got the notes that I want but again I can see these little sort of lines in the background suggesting to me that I've got some MIDI data that I probably don't need um, which is going to make a difference to the way that this sound plays. Well if I open up the automation uh, window again I can see that it's not mod data this time by default modulation is still selected here because it's the parameter that I last adjusted but by pressing this button here I get to cycle through the types of data which exist within this window and I can see that for the piano I I've got a sustain pedal playing. Now again, I want this sound to just pluck. I just want it to play a really short little note. And with the sustain on, it's going to actually sustain through these notes in a way that I don't want it to. Again, I can use the list editor to strip out that data. What I'm going to do is to select my event list again. I can see that I'm looking at the inside of this region. And what I'm going to do is to select the sustain data. Now then, here's the really nerdy little tip within this video. You can see that sustain data is either set to zero, which means that it's off, or it's set to 127, which means that it's on. Sustain is either on or off. There are no intermediate points. I can also see that the MIDI out light up here is currently lit, which means that if I click anything, it's going to play. If I click on a note, for instance, it generates that note because by clicking on it, it spits out a little bit of MIDI out data and it corresponds to the instrument that's playing it. So I could go through my piece and I could click the notes and it will play them. Now, the moment I turn off MIDI out, it won't. So now, now next time I click a note, we can't hear it. And the same thing again, it's gone. Now, why does this matter? Well, if I select a bit of sustain data and I inadvertently trigger it, let's suppose I select a sustain value of 127, if the MIDI out light is on, that's going to send a sustain on message through to this synthesizer and basically it's going to turn sustain on. Now, I don't want that. I want the data to be off. So what I've done is to make sure that I've turned off MIDI out, I can now select any of the sustain data, whether it's a zero message or 127. I can now again use my Shift S to select just the sustain data and I can get rid of it. And what that does is to keep the notes and get rid of the sustain data. And there's now no chance that I have sent through a sustain on message to this synth to turn it on which will inadvertently then keep sustain on the whole way through the project. So hopefully I've now got a doubling of that top line on the piano, but without any sustain pedal. Let's have a listen to it by itself.
Okay, and because the synth parameters are set up to not play these sustained long notes that I can see in my MIDI data, I've now got this pluck sound playing as I want it to. So what I can do is to close this down, close down the event list, and now I should have a doubling of this part from the piano and my detuned bass, which has come from the cello. And crucially, I've taken out the bits of MIDI data I don't need from those two regions so that I get the playback that I want. So in this video, we've looked at a few things. Firstly, we've learned how to copy one region from one track to another in order to be able to use the note data from one MIDI region on another instrument. But we probably knew how to do that already. Much more importantly, what we've done is to be learn how to strip out the MIDI data that we don't need on those new regions. It could be that a parameter that you're using and that is making musical sense on one instrument will actually make life difficult on another. That example of using a modulation assignment from the cellos, which is working really nicely on that instrument, wouldn't sound so great on my detuned bass where maybe I'd get a vibrato effect I don't want. And similarly, we've seen that when I copy the piano part, what I can do is to strip out sustained data so that a part that I just want to have be short and spiky doesn't suddenly become long and sustained. So by selecting the automation within an individual region and by using the event list and learning this really useful key command of selecting one bit of data and then shift and S to select similar types of MIDI data, we can qu uh, really quickly strip out the MIDI data that we don't need.